Now we're going to discuss the plate spin migrate process and see exactly what happens during a workload portability job or a job in which we take a workload from one server and migrate it to another one. So first of all, plate spin migrate needs to be installed on a server within your environment. And remember the objective of a migration job is to either migrate, so you want to send the data that comprises this server right here in your data center. Once again, what data is PlateSpin concerned with? It is the workload. So if this is a physical box, the workload, once again, is the operating system, data, and application stack sitting on top of that hardware. Okay, so when we're doing a migration in a data center, what we're typically talking about is sending the information, or PlateSpin's case, the workload, so the entire soul of that machine, across the user's own network to the new environment. Okay, in the case of migrating from a physical to a virtual server, workload portability is going to do just that. It's going to take the workload and send all the data, everything that comprises this server from the physical box, everything installed on top of the physical box, the operating system applications and data, it's going to send that directly across the user's own network infrastructure to a ready and waiting virtual machine. Okay, so if this is the machine that is going to be donating the data, we call that the source. The machine that is going to be receiving or the recipient of the data is the target virtual machine. Now in the case of a plate spin migrate, to actually have and execute uh, to get this migration taking place and to see this workload portability concept in action, there are four main steps that need to take place uh, in any server migration. Okay, and walking through them, the first one is discovery. PlateSpin Migrate is a standalone product that you install on a machine in your data center. It can be on a physical or virtual machine. PlateSpin Migrate needs to know what servers you want to actually send their data across with. Okay, so what servers are going to be donating their data, their workload data, and what servers are going to be receiving the workload data. So that process where you tell PlateSpin Migrate what servers you're interested in is called discovery. The second step is take control. Okay, in any migration that PlateSpin Migrate executes, we need a certain amount of control over the source and target environment. Now specifically for a P2V, PlateSpin Migrate needs to boot this target virtual machine into a special image that it sends down automatically as part of the job. The user doesn't typically need to prepare anything in advance. So PlateSpin Migrate gets control of the target uh, environment, okay, in this case a virtual machine, by placing it under control of a specially prepared boot image. Okay, once we have control and we know what servers we want to copy the data from and to, now it's time to copy the data. Step three is data copy. At this time, PlateSpin Migrate initiates the copy of data from the source to the target or recipient and watches the data transfer process occur. You'll notice no data is ever routed through the plate spin migrate server. It's always direct communication between the source, in this case the physical box, and the target, which is the virtual machine running on this virtual host. Now once the data has made its way, so the entire workload data has made its way across the wire and is now sitting properly in the target VM, there's a little bit of configuration that's run to make sure it will boot properly in its new environment. And lastly, we perform configuration of the target machine. This final configuration step allows the user different options for configuration during the time that you're setting up the job. Okay, when you're doing a data center migration, often now that this server is running in a new environment on a virtual host, the data has gone across the network, it might be on a new VLAN or require new IP settings. It may require a new host name living in this new virtual host. Perhaps it needs to connect to a different domain uh, controller or maybe you want virtual machine tools now installed on this machine. PlateSpin Migrate actually automates these steps if the user configures them in the job. And at this last step, configuration time, is when PlateSpin Migrate will actually ensure that those post-migration steps are properly executed. Okay? This is the summary of workload portability in action. And once again, workload portability is all about understanding from the operating system layer and up, so that's operating system applications and data, living on a machine, doesn't matter if it's living on a physical or virtual machine, workload portability is all about being able to take that data, send it somewhere else, and be able to configure it so it will boot and run properly.